Can you Hi. hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good news. Yesterday I got on a call and it was like delayed, like really like, whoa, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that can be annoying. Yeah. Um, so basically I just want to kind of like talk about your long arm process and what, like what you've been through, what you learned, you know, things that you like, like thread, batting, all that stuff. But um, whatever your story is, that's that's where I want to go. Okay. So can you uh, uh, say your name and um, your location? Uh, my name is Marika Froman Derning, and I'm in Montreal, Canada. And um, I'm a member of uh, a couple of quilt guilds, but I don't know very many people who do long arming. Yes. I, uh, um, so you want me to tell you a bit of the story about how I got into it or? Yes, please do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I started quilting. I did. I started with hand quilting about 30, a little over 30 years ago when my middle child was uh, a baby. And uh, I always swore I would never do machine quilting. I was only going to do hand quilting because that's the only real quilting <laughs> there is in the world. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, I love quilting. I really did. But then I realized, you know, I can't get half as many quilts done as, I'd like to with this yes. hand quilting so I'm gonna have to learn how to machine quilt so I started machine quilting I said yeah you know this isn't so bad you know it's a, but I'm never gonna do long arm quilting that's not real quilting I'm only gonna do you know I'll stop at machine quilting oh yeah that's then, cheating um, <laughs> last January January 2020 or actually December just before that all of a sudden I decided I wanted to do long arm quilting yeah <laughs> and um, I went to a local store and uh, picked out a Cunique 15 Pro, and I've been I just upgraded two weeks ago to a 21 Pro. I absolutely love their machines. I love the process. I'm still hand quilting, but um, I'm churning them out on my frame nonstop. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> do you have do you have something that you're working on right now that you're really into, or something that you have that's like coming up that you just can't quit thinking about um actually i'm doing one right now called i don't use a lot of patterns i make up a lot of my own designs like the one behind me uh -huh. i like to play around but um when i was in the netherlands a couple of years ago um because that's where my family's from we were going visiting and um there was this beautiful pattern called new amsterdam and it had um blue and white houses all around and then the canal thing in the middle. So it was really, so actually that's on my frame right now. And oh. uh, I'm just having a blast with it. Yeah. And do you, um, do you quilt for, for yourself only, or do you quilt for a business or just do you, do you make quilts and then sell those quilts? How do you go about it? Um, I, I quilt mostly for myself. I do take some paid commissions and uh, it's, it's mostly friends that do it. I, I don't want to make a big business out of it because I've learned long ago when, with the various crafts and arts that I do that once I start making a business out of it, it's not fun anymore. Yeah. Um, so I do have one quilt that's waiting to be done. I just did one for pay and then I'm doing this one and the next one's going to be for pay. Um, but I, I, I love the whole process. I uh, start from the scratch and, and I, I get these ideas in my head and then they just have to be made. So, I mean, we have so many quilts. I have three kids and each kid has at least three or four quilts, if not more. Their partners have quilts. We have more quilts than I can count. They're all over the walls. And in fact, I don't have a place to put this Dutch quilt because it's more, it's 72 by 72, but um, I have no more wall space. <laughs> yes, it's just seasonal. You have to start doing seasonal changing. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So I do it, you know, I, I give a lot of quilts away. Um, I whenever I hear of somebody who's just been diagnosed with cancer and is going to have chemotherapy, I'll make a hug quilt and nine times out of 10, they don't know what's coming. It just all of a sudden appears. Yeah. Um, I also just committed to doing a few quilts for um, there's a project here in Montreal for people for homeless people who get their first apartment to try and set them up with things that they need. And I promised I would make some twin twin size quilts. That's nice. Um, you know, so stuff like that. And when I first learned my machine, when I first got it, because I had never, this is, it was a very expensive impulse buy. I had never used a long arm before. 
And um, so for my practice quilts, I made quilts for the um, a lo a local adoption, uh, Greyhound adoption group, because the dogs don't care what they look like, right? No, yeah. <laughs> So it was a good way, you know, because, you know, I know people say, you know, practice for charity quilts. I'm very picky about the charity quilts. I think they have to be just as nice for them as they would be for me. So I don't really like the, I mean, that's, I'm not criticizing anybody who does it. It's just for me, I want it. So for me, so, but I, I also, I'm involved with, with animal adoption too. So for me, that was the perfect fit. It didn't matter what it looked like and I could get the practice and they were happy and I was happy. Yeah, I, I recently got a computerized uh, long arm and I'm going to take on some of the uh, cuddly, sorry about that, I thought my phone was off. Um, I'm going to take on some of the called cuddly quilts over here and uh, they're just kids quilts uh, for kids mm -hmm. that are in the hot, the local hospital here. But I'm going to, I want to practice on a real quilt and get, you know, because I can put, you know, piece of fabric, piece of fabric on, but to put the real thing right. on and measure it out and make sure it all comes out right, um, it, it's another story. So I I love doing that. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, it's fun. And yeah. I, also, I also took on some commissions. I just did two really interesting ones. One was a, a young woman whose mother had passed away um, last October, and she asked for, um, it was three memory quilts and 15 cushions. From the oh my gosh! Oh yeah. my gosh! So I did, yeah. Do you like so that? Was nice. I when I when I like open the box or the bag of all of that? Do you just feel that the presence? You know, like I know that's a little bit hokey pokey, but no, I just feel not. like when you're working on that quilt, you can you feel the love in those clothes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I was actually kicking myself because she was a young woman. She was about the same age as, as my kids in their early 30s. And um, I had told her to save time and money. If you cut up the clothing first, then I don't have to do that. And when she brought me the, it was several garbage bags. And um, she said, I didn't get it all cut. And then as I took it out, I thought, oh, my God, what a thoughtless thing that was. I should never have asked her to cut her mother's clothing because I felt bad cutting her clothing. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't occur to me, you know. Oh so I was yeah. Cutting, I was cutting up the rest of her clothing, and and it got to me. I had a, a little knot in my stomach about, you know, this woman was really loved. And yeah. Yeah. So that feeling that you describe, it's not hokey at all. It was really, I don't know. And then um, I just finished another project, which was super interesting. There was a, a write, another writer. That's what I'm a writer. And so it's a colleague and she had a, a twin size quilt from when uh, her grandmother had made it in the 60s. The top part was um, typical 60s fabric uh -huh. and the bottom was um, Asian themed fabric. But all the, <laughs> the threads had broken and worn away. So she wanted to know if I could recreate a new quilt. So she and her daughter took out all the quilting and she sent me the, the top and the bottom as two full pieces and then I cut them up and I made a stained glass quilt out of it. Oh my and gosh. That's just amazing. loved it. Just loved it. And it, it just, it went together so nicely. And then I found out um, by accident that the original quilting was done with turquoise thread and I happened to have turquoise thread. So I thought, you know, this brings it full circle. So yeah. I was really happy with that one. Yeah. I, I love doing, um, I love doing like quilts that have meaning to them. Um, yeah. it, it's, I used to do it a lot more when I first started out, you know, uh, but now it seems like most of the ones I do are the ones of bereavement quilts. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's fun because um, like I said, I don't like to follow patterns very much. So it's really fun to, to stretch and, like I, I never imagined I would do like memory quilts. I figured I would do at some point. Yeah. But this one that Dan asked me to do that was so out there and such. And I, I was really nervous because I thought if I ruin this fabric, it's not replaceable. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. You know, but I was we were both really happy with the outcome. So it was it was good. And 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 actually I wrote a blog post about it for my website and I finished it by saying some people ask me why I love to quilt so much because I really, really do love to quilt. And it just brings me such joy when I'm creating something, whether it's an image I had in my head that I have to put out 
or it's something that they've asked me or a hug quilt that I've sent to somebody who I think needs one and they're so happy and, and that makes me happy so yeah it does you know it just it's a full circle so you said that you're a writer do you is that what is that what you do all, like for a full-time job or is how does that work for you um, I'm self-employed. I'm a freelance health writer because um, I'm actually a nurse and okay. I stopped working clinic quite a while ago. And so now I write medical and health information for the web, for print, for whoever hires me. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's really neat. My mom used to be a um, a labor and delivery nurse and she's oh. very creative. She's very creative. She was also a um, uh, she, we went to medical illustration school together when I was nine and she got her master's in medical illustration. And uh, so she's a very okay. detailed uh, painter and watercolor. Um, and, but she lost her vision, I'd say about four or five years ago. So she lives with us cool. and it's, it was difficult at first, you know, because she's, you know, we're, I guess everyone is just so fond of their sight, but it seemed like since she was so creative with her sight, um, but now she crochets like there's no tomorrow and she makes hats and scarves and everything for us and they're perfect, you know, because yeah. she feels it. So yeah, I knit and I'm not looking unless it's a complicated pattern. Uh -huh. I'm not looking at what I'm doing. So when I'm watching TV, that's when I knit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you have, do you have a favorite thread that you like go to all the time? I'd say probably 95% of the time it's a glide. Uh -huh. I'm, my machine, both the 15 Pro, which I just sold, and the 21 that I have now seem to prefer the Glide. Um, I stay away from the cotton simply because of all the lint. Yes. Um, the machine came with, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it was a cotton. And I was, I, was, I was really shocked at how much lint there was. And I thought, I hope it isn't like this all the time. But then I learned about Glide. Uh, superior thread, I've used the odd time. Uh -huh. um, I don't really have a lot of it, but um, I tend to stick to glide. It's my go-to. Yeah, me too. How, how about batting? What kind of batting is your favorite? Um, I don't know if it's a favorite, but I tend to use mostly the Hobbs 8020 because mm -hmm. I buy it by the roll and it's just, it's a lot easier. Um, I've started using, uh, I like to double up, like for one of my, um, I made a beautiful quilt for my bed um, over Christmas. My husband said he wanted a warmer quilt. So I made a warmer quilt and it's hobs topped with uh, wool. There's yes. Wool on top. Yeah. So um, that's it. I, I'll use some wool. I tried bamboo the other day for somebody else's quilt, not mine. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I love doubling up. Like I, I can't get very many people to agree to double up, but it's my absolute favorite, that thickness of it. And, I, and yeah. it's just, I don't know. It's just, I think it's more squishy to me. Well, what I like about it is like the one on my bed now that I made and I just absolutely love it is um, it's not only warmer, but you can really see the quilting. Yeah. Yeah. You can really see the texture. You just and, lay and it out. That was, that was my goal. Yeah. 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 And this, this quilt is made with the Ricky Tim's hand, hand dyed fabric. Okay. And it's just gorgeous. That fabric is just gorgeous. It's uh, I had bought it. I went to one of his, um, Luminarium presentations. It was in Vermont, Ber uh, in Burlington, Vermont, um, a couple of years ago, and I bought way more of this fabric than I probably should have. <laughs> and uh, I put it aside, and I said the right project will come up. And then when my husband said he wanted a quilt, I said, "Yeah, that's it. That's what I'll use." So um, I'm guessing here. Do you do mostly custom work, or do you have computerized system on yours? I don't have computerized. I'm yeah. going to say I'm never going to use computer. <laughs> I was never going to use machine I, never I, I, I so totally, I know, yeah, I totally get you. I, I was always like, I was always custom, custom, custom. And then I was like, you know how much time, cause I do it for business. So I would make mm. more money if I had one going while I was doing custom on the other one. So I, it, it's right. As soon as you start to to think about the different things that you could do, you know, your mind starts to change on what you prefer. I just really love I love the challenge of looking at a quilt and trying to decide what I want to do with it. Um, 
most of the quilts that I've done for pay, the person has said, do what you want. I trust your judgment. Yeah, I love um, that. which is really fun because then I just look at it and I go, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And um, sometimes a quilt doesn't tell me. And I, I had one that I hand quilted recently that sat in the cupboard for probably about two years because every time I looked at it, I would start quilting something and it wasn't telling me how to quilt it. So I didn't like it. I would pull it out, put it away. And then one day I took it out and I said, yep, yeah, that's how I'm going to quilt it. Yeah. And it just came to me. So that's what happened. So like for this one, for example, I don't know if you can see it, but there's all bubbles all around, yeah. all pebbles. The whole thing is pebbles. I, I did that on the domestic machine. Um, I said, I'd never going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was just the right quilting for that because it's supposed to be like an aquarium type thing. Yes. Yes. And then seaweed on the back is kind of trapunto. So and I just looked at it, and that was the quilting that it told me to do. I, very frequently, I get into a quilt, and I get I'm, I go denser than I should, and then I realize I have to do that for the mm -hmm. whole thing. <laughs> so I did that with this one here, yeah. but you know, but it looks so good, you know. And people, people, I think really appreciate it, you know. And sometimes I just go a little extra, you know, because it's it's more fun. Mm -hmm. So do you, I think that's part of it, you know, like I, I try. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh I, 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 I try. I charge. I, I charge what the general th thing in the neighborhood is, but yeah. I might put a little bit extra in simply because I'm having fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel, too. Mm -hmm. So um, when you load your quilt, some people will float their top and some people will baste. Which one? Which method do you go for? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I sort of do a hybrid. I'll, um, I, I have uh, clamps that I like to use for my top. Okay. And so that's, yeah. And then I'll base along the side as I, as I go along. Okay. And then sometimes if it's a really complicated quilt that I'm worried might shift, I might base down the middle as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have anything else that you want to talk about that you've been working on or thinking of or want to get out there to let other people know or things that that you struggled with and that you overcame and what helped you get past it? Um, there's one thing that keeps coming up again and again in the different forums because I belong to three different Facebook groups for, for long arming. And um, there's one thing, it actually breaks my heart when I read about someone who's bought a machine and they say, you know, it's been in the room for three months and I'm too afraid to try it, to try, I'm too afraid of it, I'm too afraid to use it. Yes. Like, there's not much you can do to break it. You might break a needle, you might throw your timing off or whatever. And what is there to be afraid of? If, like, in my blog on my website, I'm constantly saying, you are going to make mistakes. And if a quilter tells you they never make a mistake, either they're lying or they never noticed it. You are going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, either with piecing, with quilting, whatever. Always make mistakes. Sometimes you fix it. Sometimes you work it into the, the quilt. And it really bothers me that people are afraid. It's like you spent all this money to buy this machine. Try it. If, if you mess up, you mess up. It's fabric, you know. And if it, I know fabric is expensive. I'm not downplaying that. But, you know, there, you know, get a piece of, uh, get your fabric in your batting and then just try different color threads or whatever and the other thing that I usually tell a new quilter now I mean I'm only been doing it for long arming for a year and a bit is I usually say for the first one don't worry about the tension everybody's afraid of the tension so don't worry about the tension do a piece that you're just getting used to using the machine yeah just practice your emotions practice your thing Forget about the tension. Don't look at the tension. It doesn't matter if it's a rat's nest underneath because what you're worried about the first part is learning how to use the machine, how to feel comfortable with the movement, you know, and then you can check and that's how you can find out if there's any bumps or anything that needs to be fixed, if your cords are dragging or whatever. Then once you feel comfortable, then start working with the tension. Because if you start working with the tension right away, you're worried about how you're using the machine, you're worried about the thread, you're worried about the pattern, you're worried about the tension, and that's not a good way to learn. Pick one thing, focus on that first, then go on to the next thing. And that I really feel strongly about. So, you know, whenever somebody's posting on the forums about, you know, I just got the machine, it's my first quilt and the tension is bad, don't worry about the tension. 
It will okay. come. It will come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the other thing that, and this I hate, this is a pet peeve. People who say, don't look at my mistakes. Well, of course you're going to zero in on the mistakes as soon as you say, don't look at my mistakes, right? <laughs> and stop say, stop apologizing for your mistakes. I don't care if it's your first quilt or your 50th quilt. Don't say, you know, I know it's not perfect. I know there's not a lot of mistakes. Don't apologize for them. Yeah. It happens. Yes. You know, it's and, 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 and if you want perfection, you're not going to get it. You know, you make mistakes, you make mistakes. I would say most of the time, if you didn't point it out, nobody would see it because exactly. we're so close. We're so close to the quilt. You know, we see all the little bits and stuff, you know, and uh, and I've taught myself not to not to point it out because it's not it doesn't matter. It's there unless I was if it mattered enough, I'd take it out and redo it. <laughs> but yeah, if it I, doesn't that matter idea. that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I did. I made, I was, I did a commission king size wedding quilt and only when it was on the frame did I see that one of the blocks was turned the wrong way. Yes. I had to take it off the frame, unpick it, unsew it. So, you know, so if it, but if it had been my quilt, I probably would have tried to figure out a way to make it work. But yeah. It wasn't mine. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I so. think that's great think advice. Yeah, I just love my machine. I think if it's something that you want to try, go for it. You know, I mean, don't don't do what I did. Don't don't do an impulse buy because if you hate it, that's not a big impulse. But if you get a chance to try it in a store or you know somebody else's, you know, give it a try because it, it's such a a feeling of freedom. There's just something much more. I mean, doing it on the machine is great. Yeah. But to be able to have it all out like this, like having just upgraded to the 21, I now have that extra space and I, I'm just loving it. I just adore my machine. To me, it's like, it's like a dance almost like you're, you're dancing with your machine kind of, you know, getting in the yeah. rhythm with it and, and, you know, just getting, getting in there with it. I think, um, like to me, if I could twirl and dance at the same time at quilt, I would. But uh, I have to let the machine do the twirling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and the other thing is too is is you get you have a better vision of what you're going to do. Oh yeah, right. You can plan I, things I, out I better. Yeah. yeah. The only thing. Oh, and this is another another tip because I tend not to follow patterns when I'm quilting. When I'm quilting at the top, if I want it to be similar at the bottom, I often don't remember. So I'll take pictures as I go along. Yes, yes, that's very good advice. Because yeah, otherwise I get to the bottom and I'm unrolling it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I've I've even done uh, on one quilt I did a diagram, so I had it. Uh, I drew it out on a piece of paper so I knew which way the feathers went in which direction. That's a good idea. It was yeah. it was an intense one. So mm -hmm. I try to keep from having to do that and make it more free flowing free so that there's not, you know, all four sides are not the same, but some quilts you right. have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's just fun. So, you know, have fun with it. It's it's supposed to be fun. Don't don't stress. Yeah, I think that's thing. wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And I'm. Um, what I'm planning on doing is taking a few of the interviews that I'm, I have them booked up for the next week and I'm going to um, put an ending and a, and a backing to each one. And then I'm going to put them on Patreon. And once I do that, I might have to get with you, uh, send you a link so that you can get on to Patreon for free. So you'll have okay. access okay. to everyone's interview that comes, comes along. Okay. And I, I plan on doing, I have seven lined up right now, and I plan on just keep doing them every weekday um, until there's a big library so that people, like you say, that people that just get their long arm, they have somewhere to go to kind of hear what other people have to say uh, about their long arm, um, their experience and all that stuff, because I think it's really important for, for us not to be scared of it, to just to have fun. 
Yeah, and, and another thing is, too, is a lot of people come to these Facebook groups and they only read the bad things about the machines. Like, for example, if you go to the Cunic ones, you'll see here. But that's because people are, are looking for help, right? It's the yeah. nature of the case. You go to these groups because you need help with your machine. And so you can't rely on negative comments. Like, even me, when I got my 21 Pro, I had problems with it and I was frustrated. So I posted that. But I'm a huge Cunic fan. Yes. You know, yes. and then and most of the problems with these machines are user caused by the user. And oh, yeah. In this case, it wasn't the machine. It wasn't me. But, you know, these things happen, too. Right. You can buy an expensive car and a week, a block away from the dealer, it can break down. There can be a problem with it. You know, these things happen. So I, I really encourage people to to take what they read online in the groups with a grain of salt, unless it's the same thing again and again and again. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I think yeah. that's great advice. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love the, the groups and, and hearing what people have to say about their machines. Um, I, I understand exactly what you're saying because I had my timing go out for the first time on that one, you know, a couple of years back. And when it happened, it took me three days to figure it out. But that was me. <laughs> yeah. That was me being like, I have to, this is it. <laughs> You know, yeah. but once I watched that, there was a video and there's a tool and I used it and it all worked. You know, it's all about, yeah. I think, our minds processing it and it clicking within us uh, what works right. for us. Right, right. Well, I'm excited to see what the other quilters say, too. Yes. Yeah. I'm, you're my second interview and I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to listen to how to interview. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to go about it, you know, to get the most useful information from people and tips and stuff like that. And it's been great mm -hmm. talking to you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Okay. I sure will. You have a wonderful day. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.